This is a Trinidad Maruga Scorpion Chili, the hottest naturally growing chili in the world. Someone is gonna eat this before the end of this film. But let's start with one of these. That was a bloody big bite. Oh, I'm so rubbish with spice. <sighs> okay, the key ingredient behind this spicy little number is capsaicin. It's compound and several closely related molecules together, which are known as capsaicinoids, occur naturally in all chili peppers. Simply, the more capsaicin, the spicier the pepper and the more intense the burning sensation. I'll get to how that works in a minute. Scientists love to put a number on things, and in 1912, an American pharmacist called Wilbur Scoville sought to do just that. He quantified the heat of various chilies with the eponymous Scoville, or <coughs> Ganoleptic test. Back when it was devised, the test involved diluting an extract of capsaicin with sugar water until a panel of five testers could no longer detect the heat in their mouths. The degree of dilution gave the peppers potency in, yeah, you guessed it, Scoville heat units. He really liked the name of himself, didn't he? Getting it out there. Right. Although an innovative approach back in 1912, the taste test wasn't infallible, since as any committed curry eater will tell you, which I am not, as you can tell, we gradually become accustomed to spice. It's known as capsaicin desensitization, or taster's fatigue, meaning that in addition to perils of human subjectivity, repeatedly supping on sugar and spice wears out the taste buds and makes testers less capable of accurately detecting heat levels. <coughs> Modern science has offered a solution to tasters' fatigue in the form of the suitably technically sounding high-pressure liquid chromatography. This process is able to precisely determine the concentration of capsaicinoids in parts per million, which can then be conveniently multiplied by 16 to give a chili's heat in good old Scovilles. Using this method, scientists could finally put reliable figures on their peppers and work out once and for all which was the hottest of them all. I'm still holding the hottest naturally growing chili. That's later. This guy though, registers at around about 5,000 Scovilles, meaning I'd now need to drink five liters of sugar solution to mask the heat of just one milliliter of the extract of this. Now, that sounds like a lot, but peppers like this, like jalapenos, are small fry on the spiciness steaks. The Amarillo pepper, for instance, a staple of Peruvian cuisine, is 10 times more potent than this, ranking somewhere between 30,000 and 50,000 on the Scoville scale. And the hottest pepper in the world, it's not this because it's a cross. It's named the Carolina Reaper. It's a shockingly hot 1,569,300 Scoville heat units on average. That means you need around 10 bathtubs of sugar solution to compensate for just the intense burn of a single drop a reaper extract. Sorry, Greg in the studio, it's Greg at home. I'm gonna to have to interrupt you. You filmed this a couple of weeks ago and actually there is now a new hotter kid on the chili block. It was bred by a Welsh farmer, accidentally it looks like. Uh, it's called the Dragon's Breath Chili, which is just brilliant. And it comes in at around about 2.4 million Scovilles. Anyway, that's it, you're up to date. Back to you in the studio, Greg. Now, if you're wondering why plants feel the need to stuff their fruits with fiercely fiery capsaicin, head over to our sister channel, BBC Earth Unplugged, where Maddie will explain all. But how exactly does capsaicin produce the supposedly pleasurably painful burning sensation that is currently going on in my mouth and that we call spicy? Well, most of us are familiar with the five core tastes that we're capable of experiencing. Sweet, salt, bitterness, sourness, and that mysteriously savory umami. What's noticeably absent from that list is that excruciatingly fiery burn of a chili pepper. And that's because the heat of a chili is not a taste at all, but a sensation that is virtually identical to the sense of real extreme heat inside my delicate mouth. The insides of our mouths don't just contain taste buds, but also nerve endings that can detect temperature, pain, pressure, in a bid to protect us from putting things in our mouths that we really shouldn't. It just so happens that capsaicinoids, the molecules are the right shape 
and size to bind to the receptors that usually respond to extreme heat and to trigger a nerve impulse that travels to the central nervous system. Once there, the brain can't tell the difference between a capsaicin-triggered pain and a real heat-triggered pain, so they feel the same to you. The difference between a chilli pain and an actual real heat pain is that however much a super potent chilli hurts, the capsaicin molecules never actually cause any harm. Whereas if you're a little too eager to gulp down that super hot cup of tea, the same burning sensation will be the hallmark of real tissue damage. However, since your brain is fooled into thinking that a chilli's heat is real, the autonomic nervous system immediately sets about to try and cool your body down, triggering all those responses that we typically experience when eating a hot chili. We pant, which I've been doing, to get more cold air past the affected regions. We turn red, I don't know if I've changed colour, as the blood vessels near our skin widen to try and shed some of that heat, and we sweat which I am definitely doing. You sweat for the evaporation of that water to cool down the skin. I tend to sweat here. My mates call it a nose waterfall. Yeah, it's delightful this, isn't it? While we may be tempted to reach for the water to put out the phantom flames, it won't do any good since H2O just doesn't have the power to shift those offending molecules. Instead, you need a simple slurp of milk. Yes! Much more effective as casein the protein in the white stuff is able to break down those bonds between capsaicin and the nerve receptors, stopping the pain in its tracks. <sighs> so far, so good. But it does seem a little worryingly odd that we routinely spice up our lives by adding chilies to our food when they cause a pain that's indis... indis I can't even speak now. The pain that's very similar to a real burn. The rush of endorphins through our brain can actually make us feel good when we're experiencing that spicy heat of hot sauce. And given that this particular kick isn't associated with any lasting damage, we can comfortably keep coming back for more. And for the discerning spice lover, there's more to a chili's heat than just where it falls on the Scoville scale. That precise combination of capsaicinoid compounds can control how quickly the heat builds, how long it lingers, and whether it feels sharp or flat. Different cultures have even developed distinct preferences for the type of spice, with Asian populations opting for sharp, prickly heat that dissipates quickly, whereas American foodies prefer a flat heat that grows and lingers on the tongue. So the next time you're tucking into some cheeky hot wings, you can estimate your Scovilles, sample the spice like a fine wine, and sound like quite the connoisseur. But one final note before this. Capsaicin is able to trigger burning pain from receptors all over the body, not just in the mouth. So be careful not to get it in your eyes or anywhere else. Okay, I've said someone is gonna try this. That someone is not me. Because as you've seen, I am really rubbish with spice. <clears throat> I'm also a scientist, so I know just how bad this is gonna be. Now, if you regularly watch these Earth Lab films, you will sometimes see cheeky comments appear from uh, our editor, Jack. Who is here? Jack, are you going to come and try the hottest naturally growing chilli in the world? Sure. All right, Jack, you ready? All right, come yep. on. Come on in. Glove is on. Uh, pass, this, pass this to you. I've got gloves on because, um, yeah, it's just so much capsaicin. You don't want to get that on your hands and touch anyway. All right. Chin chin. How big? Just, yeah, just a little. Just little. It's quite warm. <laughs> no, really? Yeah, it's not too bad. Mmm, it's good. What? You're, you're, you're coping a lot better than me with that <laughs> really rubbish one. No, it's not too bad. Yeah. What? Yeah, <laughs> it's all right. Uh, I just felt like I needed to come and vlog this because <laughs> Jack, he came over very cool and calm during the actual recording there. Um, yep. It turns out the chili takes some time to build. If you enjoyed this Earth Lab video, please do make sure you like, subscribe, click the bell to be notified when we release a new video of me answering more of your burning questions. Get it? Burning. Never mind.